I'm going to title my message today, Don't Forget the Baby. Don't forget the baby. You may be seated. So just read Luke chapter 1. Don't forget the baby. I don't know why Ziegler liked this song. I have never sang it before in public, but it's on my Christmas CD. Mary had a baby. Mm-hmm. Mary had a baby. Mm-hmm. Mary had a baby. Mary had a baby. Mary had a baby. Mm-hmm. What did she call him? Mm-hmm. What did she call him? Mm-hmm. What did she call him? What did she call him? What did she call him? Mm-hmm. She named him King Jesus. Mm-hmm. She named him King Jesus. Mm-hmm. She named him King Jesus. She named him King Jesus. She named him King Jesus. Mm-hmm. Born in a manger, mm-hmm. was born in a manger, mm-hmm. was born in a manger, born in a manger, born in a manger. Mm-hmm. Mary had a baby, mm-hmm. Mary had a baby. Mm-hmm. Mary had a baby, Mary had a baby, Mary had a baby. Mm Mary had a baby. Well, Mary had a baby. Of all the babies that's been born in this world, I don't know of any baby that would bring all of us together like this baby that Mary had. And I'm, I want to tell this story as to why I decided to use this title. A family one time were going out of town. They had packed all of their things. They had packed all of their clothes to go out of town. They put everything in the station wagon. And then they had a little truck on the back. They were pulling everything, all of their belongings to go out camping and have a very good time over the weekend. Everything Clothes were in the bags, everything, suitcases were in their trunk, and all of their belongings were there. And then they had two children that they put in the cars with them. And just as they were taken off and got halfway down the road, the mother screamed, Oh, God, we forgot the baby. The baby was just three months old, a little infant. But they were so busy packing and putting all the things to get ready for the trip, they forgot the baby. And that's a word to you today that some of us are so busy shopping, cooking, buying presents for one another. And seeing loved ones that you want to see this year and you probably won't see the next Christmas. But here's the sad part about it. You have forgotten why we're here. You've forgotten the baby. Oh, don't forget this baby. 
Now ask me why you shouldn't forget this baby. It's not your birthday. It is his birthday. Now I know we don't know exactly the date when Jesus was born, the 25th of December, you heard me say that before, is actually a pagan holiday. And so is Easter. Nobody know exactly the day and the hour Jesus was born, but we pick a day. We pick a day, and I went into that last time as how all these things got in the church, because Catholicism means it uses versality. If you know anything about church history, the oldest church is the Catholic Church. And all of us came out of the Catholic Church. You are Protestant because when Martin Luther, who hung his 99 Theses on the Pope's hall, hall door steps, he started the Proformation movement, which called Protestant, which protests the Catholic Church. And you are not Catholic, you are Protestant. You are Methodist, Baptist, anything else that's not Catholic is Protestant because of Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, who protests against the Catholic Church because of some indulgence and things they used to pay to sin. Isn't that something? If you want to go out and do something wrong, you pay the priest. And I know some of y'all would love to see that now, but that ain't going to happen. I can pay Reverend to go lie on my neighbor. I can pay Reverend if I go out and do something wrong. And pay for sin. Those indulgent that he went against. And all of that's why there's a universal church that's all around the world. But all of us came out of the Catholic Church. Because the word Catholic means universality. And as a result of these things, as I said before, all this got in the church. And if the church had not allowed Christmas trees in, which were for people who worship idols, and had not allowed statues in, which you see in the Catholic Church a lot, and had not allowed lights in, which you see in the church around the tree, and had not allowed some other images in the church, we wouldn't have been able to reach them. We wouldn't have been able to reach them because they were heathen worshipers. And they worship rocks. They worship trees. They worship lights. And the church said, how can we get these people saved? Well, let them bring their idols in. Let them bring all the stuff that they love. And let's get in there and turn it around and show them God. Instead of condemning the tree, let's bring the Christmas tree in. And put the lights around it. So that they'll see Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the tree of life. Instead of turning down these rocks, bring them around and pull these statues in. That's why you see a lot of statues in the Catholic Church. So people worship statues. Let's bring all of that in so we can get these folks saved. And it worked. As a result of that, the largest organization, religious body in the world is the Catholic Church. When I was preaching in South America, Trinidad, I was invited to Cuba. And the reason I didn't go, I was scared of Castro for one thing. <laughs> and one of the reasons I turned down going when I was on world travel, there were more Catholic churches there in Cuba than Baptist. So I really had a small crowd, a delegation waiting on me when I left Trinidad, but I didn't want to go to Cuba. But most everywhere you go, the Catholic Church surrounds and dominates everything. And I'm not here to give you a course on church history, but I want you to know where I'm coming from. How these things became a part of us because of Martin Luther who brought that. And I know we talk about Santa Claus, which represents a priest who saw a lot of poor people. And he decided to have compassion by giving them gifts and leaving them at the doorstep. And these things became a very popular as to why we're here. But here's the point. It's not about when he was born. Thank God he was born. 
How you know you 83? You know because somebody told you. You weren't there. Suppose you were switched around. And your mama think you the baby. Some babies did get switched around. And thought but all babies look alike. You don't know you're 83. You know it because we told you that. And there used to be midwives. Where there was no record kept. So you might be 27. <laughs> That's funny. You don't know. You know what we told you. That's your age. So we don't get all caught up in days. Have fun. Enjoy, but just say, I don't know when he was born, but I, that, that, that's irrelevant. The important thing, he was born. I get sort of sad when I see how people love singing Silent Night and don't believe in it. I get probably I'm kind of sad when people talk about joy to the world and say they don't believe in God. I get a little confused when I hear people singing, uh, it came up on the, night, the, the midnight period, and they don't even believe in that. They just do it out of tradition. But my message today to you on this Christmas morning is that don't forget the baby. But don't forget it if nobody gave you nothing today. It's not your birthday. Now, if you were born on the 25th of December, then it's your birthday. But how are you going to get mad with somebody who didn't give you nothing? And get mad while we in church when it's not even your birthday. We said this is the 25th day. We want to celebrate Jesus. So if nobody gave you nothing for Christmas, you already got the greatest gift. Some people can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. All right. Now, something else I want you to grab about why we should not forget this baby because when God gave us this baby it didn't have to be a baby God could have come as thunder and lightning he could have said it because he did it once before he spoke to Moses and the thunder and the lightning start flashing because Moses wanted to see him and the children of Israel wanted to see God and Moses said come around the mountain and then I'll let you see God. You been wanting to see him? Let's see him. Yes, and when they got around the mountain, cleaned themselves up, God starts speaking, and the mountain started shaking, and everything started rocking, lightning was flashing, and they told Moses, tell God to hush. We'll hear you from now on, because we can't take it. What if God didn't come as a baby? And decide to come as thunder. He knew that he couldn't come as thunder. Some of us can't even stand on loud, loud noise as it is. And most of us are scared of thunder. What if God had come as lightning? And he was flashing his lightning as he did once in the Bible with Moses. And people got scared when God spoke. What if God just came as a lightning bolt? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If God came in, I said, come at lightning bolt, I'm going out the door. I'm going to say, Lord, I'll talk to you later. But don't talk to me in lightning. What if God came as the rivers? Because he knew that everybody couldn't swim. I'm not going to come as lightning. I'm not going to come as thunder. Everybody can't take it. I'm not coming at the river to make you get in so you know me. All of y'all will be saying, Lord, I love you, but I can't drink all that water. That's the way black folk talk. Isn't that amazing? What if God came like some animals instead of a baby? What if he come like a mule? What if he come like a cow? What if he come like a donkey? What if he come like some other huge ele elephant? You would say, I can't get near no elephant. He's too powerful. God said, I don't want to come as something some people will never know about me if I came that way. But I'm coming as a baby. What more can impress folk like a baby? A baby brings joy in a home. When you see a baby, you start smiling. 
Even if you see a little old infant, you something about a baby make you open up. If you're fussing, you stop fussing when you see a baby. If you're, if you're mad and you see a little old baby next to you, say, you start smiling. It's something about a baby in a house. I remember when my first baby was born, I must have looked at him three hours. And when my grandson was born, first one, I looked at him two or three hours. And the dog said, what you stand there for? I said, my <laughs> bones of my bones, flesh of my flesh. And you can imagine I'm a first little old young daddy, how I stood there and looked at that little boy. And they had to come there and say, Mr. Fleming, you got to go. I said, I I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Ooh, you, you feel like a man when you're a young daddy. When you get a baby and then a boy with that and oh God said he knew I would have run a girl if I had a girl good Lord I run her so I'd be spending up every dime I got buying dresses and everything <laughs> don't let me get a girl I prayed for a girl the second time and Lord here come Kenneth <laughs> amen and then I prayed for one here come Timothy I, Lord, I give up now. Then I'm just going to steal one of these little girls. Let me tell you something. A baby brings joy at home. I've seen babies hold families together. That folk wouldn't leave, but because of babies. Are you getting this? God said, no, I'm coming as a baby because I know what a baby does. And any time you see a baby, a baby represents weakness. A baby represent, you know, innocence. Can't do nothing for themselves. Now let me tell you something else. Why God became a baby. Wow. He became a baby because God used a baby or used a woman and the devil used a woman. You get a baby through a woman and a man being involved. And just think about that. God used a baby to come through a woman and the devil used a woman to introduce sin. Two women. And God used them. It was through a woman that man messed up. I know you're all getting quiet. He didn't use nothing else. How did the devil get us in the shape we're in? Why are we suffering today like we are? Because of sin. Well, who introduced it? The devil. But who did he go through? I don't want to pray now. He went through the weak. They said she's the weaker vessel. So she's the weaker vessel, but got a hold of the stronger vessel. And it looked up. God said, I don't want to come like a grown-up. I don't want to come like some other military giant. I don't want to come like Pompey, who, when he conquered the world, came riding back in the Rome, pulled by 40 elephants, and got all of his subjects behind him, and got all his prisoners in cage. I don't want to come like Caesar, who came and said, I came, I saw, and I conquered. I don't want to come like Alexander the Great who sat down and cried at 21 years old because there were no more worlds to conquer. I don't want to come like Nebuchadnezzar who conquered the known world in his day with Babylon. I don't want to come like those generals. I want to come unnoticed. I want to come weak, innocent, helpless, baby. Help me, Holy Ghost. God said, I could have used all that and I'm coming. I'm coming right back through the same person, kind of person that messed up man, a woman. And I'm going to use a woman to bring a baby and get man back together again. Y'all got it? See, the devil knew how to use the woman. Adam was all right until he got Eve. And when he, uh, <laughs> he was walking with God. But see, he got the mama jamma in the house. And the devil said, I know he's too close to God. But women have been known for weakness, though they're strong. 
and he went through the weaker vessel. The Bible called her the weaker vessel. That's what the Bible called the woman, the weaker vessel. And he went through who's weak. And when the devil see you, and he can't get to you no other way, he go through somebody weak close to you. The devil go through somebody you care a lot about. The devil go through your child, your husband, your wife. They could be weak. And he, he know how to get us. He know what we love. He know what we like. And, and Adam was a hidden pig. He was a hidden pig. Because what Eve brought him that fruit, he should have said, to her, now where'd you get that from? I got it from the tree. But look, didn't God tell us don't eat it? Yeah, but you need to take that right back over there where you got it from before you eat us out of a house and a home. But what he said, when he saw that good looking mama jamma, he said, bones of my bones. Flesh of my flesh. Hell help, baby. To keep you out, bite all of them. He bit it. <laughs> he, look at somebody and say, he bit it. <laughs> and he forgot God. And God came walking in the cool of the day. And he didn't never ask for her. He said, Adam, where are you? He left for her. That's your business. I gave her that for your comfort. And now you turn on me for the comfort. Help me, Holy Ghost. Don't ever allow the devil. What, what messed up Samson? Yeah, I know. What got John the Baptist's head cut off? <laughs> I, I'll hush. <laughs> I ain't gonna make these ladies mad because they put more money in church than men. Yeah. <laughs> but, but showing you how the devil go at whatever you are attracted to. And he knew. And this is what God did. I'm going through a woman. Jesus could have been born grown. But if he had been, it would have made the prophet out of a lie. That said he shall be a child. God was keeping up with prophecy by letting Mary have the baby Jesus. And he said, no, I want it to be a baby coming through a mother. Something else I want to tell you why you shouldn't forget this baby. Because we got weak memory. Most of us got poor weak memory. And we always forgetting things. We forget why we're here this morning. Not clothes. Not jewelry. Not gifts. But God greatest gift. Why you wait once a year on Christmas to come to church? When God be, oh I ain't getting no amen. I'm glad I got that offering out the way. Listen my brothers and sisters. We keep forgetting things, and all through the Bible, God is constantly saying, remember. That's why we're in a war right now, because on Yom Kippur, the Jews always remember special holidays. They remember when God marched through the, with the death angel and put the blood post, or the blood on the doorpost, and the death angel passed over their house. And God said, as often as you meet, Get together every year. Don't forget what I did. I led you out. I brought you through. But where we are today, folk forget about God who brought them. You forget about when you had nothing and God put money in your pocket. You forgot when you were sick and God healed your body. You forgot when you were down to your last dime and he put some money in your pocket. Why would you forget this baby? I'll tell you why we got poor memory. I remember when we were going through a case, a, a case in court and we were fighting with the bank on some issues. And I had my lawyer, I had a little white young female. I brought her in and the old bank had an old lawyer and he was talking all kind of talk and I was sitting there with my head 
down and eyes closed. And then afterward, we met again. And all that we had written down in the documents, he misquoted. And guess what she wrote him a letter and said? Evidently, you have a weak memory. I never forgot that word since. Weak memory. You forgot what you said. And she sitting there wasn't never saying one word, just writing, taking notes. Better watch folk who doesn't talk, but taking notes. Some of you all got a weak memory. Look at somebody and say, the reason why some of you are not blessed, look at them. Got a weak memory. <laughs> I know some of you guys are touching your wife, you better stop. <laughs> Pastor said you got a weak memory. Listen, the reason why you're going to go somewhere and eat today and wouldn't come to church, got a weak memory. You know why I have Christmas every year on, on Christmas Day? I remember. You got to, you know, you know what? When you got a weak member, God gets against you. Said, forget not my benefit. He's always, every time we meet on communion. Do you know why we meet every first Sunday? Jesus said the only thing he ever asked us to do, do this in remembrance of me. Remember how I died. Remember how I suffered. Just don't forget me. Now let me say something else here. I want to tell you something about why you don't forget this baby. God wanted to become fully man so that we would be full of him. He became fully man as well as fully God so we can get full of him. And if you know anything about well in my school days, the church split up over this ideology of God becoming a man, fully man and fully God. It took years of counseling and meeting to discussing that. How can he be fully man and fully God? But God was fully man as well as fully God. As a man, he went to a wedding. But as a God, turned water into wine. As a man, he went to sleep on a ship. As a God, got up and said, peace be still. As a man, help me Holy Ghost. He got hungry like everybody else. As a God, he made a bakery shop and fish market. He took a little boy lunch. As a man, died on the cross. As a God, got up early Sunday morning. He was God and man. Fully. And he became a fully man. As well as a fully God. That's what this baby. I'm just about done. I want to tell you something else I see. Why God became a man. He wanted to be a baby and grow up. What if he'd been born grown? He wouldn't have been able to tell us about being babes in Christ. God became a baby to grow up in the manhood. Watch this. To teach me something about growing in Christ. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me this morning. Let's, let me tell you something, Frank. Thanks. You can only be saved as you come as a child. I got one for you. Hey, like this red? Ain't no grown folk in heaven. No grown folk in heaven. Jesus said, except you come as a little child. You cannot enter. You know why God doesn't need no grown folk in heaven? Grown folk will take over heaven. Y'all already take it over. Don't talk about I ain't no child. <laughs> you are a child of God. But God said you can't get to heaven until you come as a child. And one thing about a child that I know different from grown folk, when children are fighting, if grown folks stay out, they'll be playing again. But when grown folk get in it, Lord, I don't have to tell you. When grown folk get in it, boy, you got some fighting, cussing, and everything going on. On a babe. Now, I'm going to close with this. I see you getting hungry and sleepy. When you've been preaching long as I am, I watch folk. And you know what? I always say if, you, if a preacher 
preach too long uh-huh. and you don't want to tell him, yeah. give him one of his own sermons. <laughs> and when he go home, put him to sleep. Yeah. One man preaching so hard and preaching so long one time, he told a lady, hey, wake up that brother sitting over there. She said, you wake him up, you put him to sleep. <laughs> I'm not going to put you to sleep this morning. I want to tell you something else about this growing in grace. The only way you can get to a level where you can look back and be thankful for some stuff you've done, sometimes you're glad to be thankful because you know what some folk don't know. You can be glad you were out there in the world in a lot of ways. I don't know about some things. I've been a boy preacher all my life, never knew how to dance, didn't know how to, couldn't go to the dance, and I wanted to dance with a girl, and every time I met a girl, they went and called her the sister. And I lost every girl I met. Hey, sister. Man, I didn't want them calling her sister. They ran the girl away. Well, she, you go with the preacher, don't you? And then one of them asked my girlfriend, do he kiss? So tell her, ask me, I sure do. I wasn't human. I couldn't play. When I tried to play basketball with some boys, and I was playing football, look at God, give that preacher power. Oh, God, man. I was scared to go to the prom because I, I didn't want them talking about preacher dancing. And when I went to the show at 12 years old, some boys made me feel so bad. Preacher at the show. Preacher at the show. I said, oh, God, I just wanted to see sin bad. Can you imagine I had no fun? That's why I married 19 so early. I had no life. They wouldn't let me be human. And I wanted to be like everybody else. And it's been hard coming up. So I want you to learn how to appreciate Jesus for coming like us, walking like us, understanding like us. That he understand like this. He understand what you go through. He was poor. He had nothing. He didn't come in no rich family. His daddy was a carpenter. And Joseph died when Jesus was just a teenager. Because an object fell on him, he was a carpenter. And when Mary got there and left James, his brother, to sleep by the other children, when she got there, Joseph was already dead. So Jesus had to become the carpenter and take his daddy trade. And when he got 30 years old, he left it in the hands of James, his next brother, and went on the road, said, I must be about my father's business. He know all about what you go through. He told us I'm going to be born as a baby to teach me how to be born again. Taught me how coming as a baby. God is saying in becoming a baby, I want to experience what a man is experiencing. I want to go through trials and tribulations. I want to be tempted just like all men are tempted. I don't want to come as a grown man. Let me learn what it's like to be a little boy. I want to take on the flesh of men. And uh, he became a baby. So that uh, he teaching me how to grow in Christ. Every day I'm growing. Some of us used to be babes in Christ. But you ought to be able to stand here this morning and say, I can take some stuff that I used to couldn't take. How can you take some things you used to couldn't take? How can you take being lied on? How can you take it when people put you down? How can you take it when you get out on your knees and pray? And ask God, do you understand what I'm going through? I'm sure he will tell you, I know what you're facing. I've been there and I've done that. I've seen my own kinfolk turn their backs on me. 
You thinking about some kid folk this Christmas that don't appreciate you and you might be going through some trials with them. You ought to ask Jesus about it. His own sisters and brothers didn't even believe in him. And if you ever thought about it, when he was hanging on the cross, you didn't hear nobody there but Mary. Where was his brothers and where was his sisters? He had brothers and sisters. They call him crazy. They went to get Jesus one time. Some people called his folk and said, you need to come get your brother. He's going around talking about he's God. And they went to get Jesus and bring him home. One day they said, your brothers, your mother's sisters and brothers are down there looking for you. And Jesus said, who are they? All I know is to do the will of the Father. I've been a baby and I understand what men are going through. Now, the last thing I want to tell you, don't forget this baby because of what this baby has done for you. Don't forget this baby when you think about what he brought. Some people, babies, didn't bring nothing. But when you think about this baby, what did he bring me, Fleming? That's why I don't want to forget Jesus. Well, he brought me forgiveness. When I think about my past and all the things I've done wrong, and I go to God in prayer and ask him for forgiveness, he says, I already done. He said, I take your sin and throw it out in the sea of forgetfulness and won't remember no more. You ought to be glad he brought that. He said, I bring you the bread of life. I know you're hungry sometimes. I know you want the word of God. But Jesus said, I'm bread. And I can tell him every day, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. I can eat him every day. I want to consume him in my body. He is my bread. And what else did he bring me? This baby brought me forgiveness. I can forgive everything I've done. When he hung on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Yes, he did. He brought me water of life. So when I'm thirsty, this baby said, I am the water of life. What else did he bring me? This baby brought me light. When I'm walking in darkness, he said, I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the light. I am. I'm a mother that won't leave you on a doorstep. I'm a father that'll come home to his children. I am that I am. Ain't God all right? I'm close in here. I don't want to forget this baby because he was born on a silent night and a holy night. I'm in this church today because of this baby. I got food on my table because of this baby. I can look back and say I'm forgiven of my sin because of this baby. And lastly, I don't want to forget this baby because when this baby came in this world and grew up and went all the way to Calvary, this baby became a grown man and they hung him high, stretched him wide, dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and gave up the ghost. This baby said it is finished and died on the cross 
for your sin and mine. But what I love about this baby, this baby, God of love, oh, One Sunday morning, yes, he did. And got up out that way. And he knew I was going to be here this morning. And get what he said. Oh, power. Oh, power. Whatever you need. Oh, power. Whatever blessing you need. Oh, power. If you need a breakthrough. Oh, power. If you need a healing. Oh, power. Hey. 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 Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody hear? So I'm glad for the baby. I'm glad he came. But what else, Fleming? He's coming back. That same baby born in Bethlehem is coming back again. One of these mornings won't be very long. Gabe are going to come down. Put one foot on the land. Put one foot on the sea. Declare time now. What a beat no more. Ha. Where shall I be? Ha. When the first angel crown ha. Gonna sound so loud ha. Till it wakes up the dead ha. And on that great getting the morning ha. I'm gonna get up out the grave ha. I'm gonna see Abraham ha. Isaac and Jacob ha. When that angel ha. Blow that trumpet ha. I wanna be somewhere Listen when it call my name I'm gonna move up a little higher move on up around the pearly gates when that angel blow that trumpet I want to see my mother I want to see my father I got a baby over there I want to see all right but most of all most of all when I get there I want to see Jesus Jesus Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, God, getting a little happy when I think about Jesus. They get all in my feet, get all in my hand. I just got to tell somebody, I thank the Lord. For bringing me a long ways. Can you look back and say it was Mary, baby? It was Mary, baby. Brought me where I am. You ever been sick? Did he heal you? Spin around and say, God, turn things around. Won't it turn around? Won't it turn around? Oh, did it do it? Somebody say, I can't forget it. I got to remember him. I can look back. I can't forget the Lord. I can't forget this baby. Look what he brought me. Brought me grace. Brought me love. Brought me forgiveness. How can you forget it? Ah, hello, hello.
I feel alright. I feel something on me. I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now. And I can't be quiet. I can't keep quiet. When I look back and see how it brought me, I can't be still. When I look back and say, well, nobody but the Lord. Nobody. No, 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 Thank you, Lord. Oh. Point at somebody and say, it's a God somewhere. coming as a grown man. Thank you for coming as a baby. Just to show us how low God will stoop. That you stoop down to save us. You stooped. Gave up your royal diadem. Gave up your throne and your crown in heaven and came down here and stooped. The creator became the creature. The fixer became fixed. The lawgiver being ruled by the law. Up 
has become down. Lord, when we leave this place today, let us go out of here thinking about your birthday. We can't give you no gifts. All we can give you is ourselves. And I am so grateful you stooped and came low. Now receive this word to your people. To see how I meant it from my heart. How we appreciate why on this day we will remember you and not forget the baby.